Hey everyone. Well, there were two things I wanted to purchase before this cruising season starts. One was a windlass and the other one was auto helm. I still need a windlass, so that narrows it down to what I've just purchased and installed on the boat. I've never had auto helm before, so this is really new and exciting for me. I've been on boats, obviously, with auto helm, so I understand the value. It's just one of those things I've been putting off and after almost six years of cruising on this boat, it was time to finally uh, make the purchase. Well, let's get to the auto helm that I purchased. It's a Raymarine Evolution Autopilot, and there's four items that make up the entire unit, and I'll just show you them quickly. These are just empty boxes because everything's installed. But uh, you have the pilot control unit, so this is where you uh, send the information to turn on the unit, or if you want to go 10 degrees to starboard or port, things like that, tells you your bearing. And it's the uh, P70S model is the, uh, there's different models, but uh, this is the one that I've got now. And this I call this sort of the brain box of the whole unit. It's the ACU 100, so all the information runs into this and then it's distributed to the right locations. Um, that it needs to go when it receives the information it needs. And then there's the EV sensor core. So this is basically your uh, compass. So this tells the ACU 100 um, which bearing you're on. It sends that information to it. And then I don't have the box for the drive unit because it's pretty big. Um, and that's the uh, wheel drive which is mounted on my steering wheel. So Things I had to consider uh, for the drive unit is, did I have wheel steering or tiller steering? And the other thing I had to consider was, uh, I have wheel steering, so that's why I've got the wheel drive unit. What is the unit or the steering driven by cables or hydraulics? So that sort of depended on what I could uh, choose as well. So because I have cable steering, I had to mount the drive unit right on the wheel itself out back and I'm sure many people have seen uh, those before but you'll see it again uh, in this video. I'll tell you right away there's not any video of me running wires or drilling holes uh, it just seemed a little bit routine and to be honest I was doing a lot of this at night uh, after work so I'm using a headlamp and there's at times I'm upside down uh, in the lazarette out back uh, on my back so it's kind of awkward to film that stuff uh, when you're by yourself. So before I started the project I had a whole game plan in mind and as I started reading the manuals uh, I found out I had to make a lot of adjustments to that plan. One of the things the manual mentioned is that you can't have any of this equipment mounted within three feet of VHF equipment that's uh, cables or uh, microphones, things like that, or the actual VHF units. So where I wanted to mount the control pilot uh, was right next to my RAM mount outside for my VHF. So clearly I couldn't do that. So I had to reassess and think of where else I could put this. So I spent a couple days just trying to uh, think about it. I never make rush <laughs> decisions on these things when I because it's cutting holes in your boat. And I realized that I have this uh, hole already in the bulkhead outside, right next to that speaker, that has an old Navman depth sounder that doesn't even work. It has never worked since I bought the boat. And there's a hole already drilled there. So I just found an old little piece of wood and I mounted the pilot control there. It's not recommended that you mount the pilot control with out of reach of when you're at the helm but I can get in front of the wheel and I can just reach over and uh, touch it but I thought if it saves me from drilling a hole in the cockpit somewhere then I would just try that out and see how it works also if I'm using auto helm I'm most likely going to be sitting ahead of the wheel anyways and I can easily uh, just do the plus one degree port or starboard or plus 10 degrees port or starboard and there's also an auto tack feature on here so if I'm sailing I can just tell it to tack and by pushing a button and then the boat will tack and I'm going to want to be ahead of the wheel anyways 
to run the sheets and control the main. So this might work out as a good location, but it did recommend that this is closer to the helm uh, than what I've decided. But like I said, just trying it out, I can always move it and the hole was already there anyways. So uh, it just saved me from drilling another hole. Anyways, enough about that. And that's not close to any uh, VHF equipment. The next thing I mounted was the steering, uh, the wheel drive. And the issue I had there was that there's only a limited amount of space between the wheel and the pedestal posts. And I couldn't fit the drive unit in there with enough space to clear the posts. Um, to put the wheel back on that the wheel has threaded on at the end with a nut and I so I sat on that for a bit and I thought well how can I fix this and it turned out to be one of the sim most simplest solutions I could imagine was I just turned the wheel around so it's reverse and now it uh, it fits perfect there's lots of clearance and lots of room for the drive unit um, the next thing I mounted was the uh, sensor core this also had to be away from VHF equipment. It had to be away from the engine, uh, I think three feet again, and from batteries. So I had to uh, carefully choose this location. Uh, everything I was planning to mount was going to be in the lazarette outside. So it would have been a little bit exposed to possible uh, damage with things going in and out all the time, but it just seemed like that was going to be the easiest. I ended up mounting everything over in the quarter berth inside so it's in a more controlled environment and it's uh, more protected from uh, the elements like cold and moisture. So this was mounted just in the quarter berth on the ceiling near the back. It has to be uh, running so that this little uh, uh, arrow, the green arrow, is pointing forward. It has to be within five degrees uh, when you're sitting normally uh, level. So there's those things to consider. Something else I had to consider was the cables that I was provided, will they all sort of reach? So uh, the pilot control unit is up on the bulkhead and it runs right through to the quarter berth quite easily uh, in that ceiling. And then the drive unit runs from the wheel down to the ACU 100. And I'll tell you where I mounted that next. Um, so this was mounted it's recommended that this is mounted close to the batteries, as close as possible. So I have a little storage area, well it's not really storage, more of an access area, under the quarter berth, which is just behind the batteries. So it's literally right on the other side of the batteries. And all the cables were going to reach fine to this. And this has to be powered separately. They don't provide the power cables for this. And I used uh, 12 gauge uh, wiring for this. Even though it's not running very far, I just thought uh, 12 gauge would be uh, better than 16 or, uh, or a higher number. So this is mounted uh, right just on the other side of the um, batteries in that uh, access area. The pilot control goes to the CTOC system. That's the wiring system that's the uh, that all communicates with each other, and they're easy little snap-in uh, connections. And everything on all that information goes into here. So everything's linked with their their uh, this uh, CTOC system that they have. And the other thing that had to have its own power. I'm trying to think was this. Oh, the CTOC uh, cable system has to have its own power. It, it did provide the power cables for that. So there's two different things that need to be powered uh, for this whole unit. And I had the option of running this through a breaker panel. That was an option. Or it, it is an option to directly uh, hook it up to your batteries. So I hooked the, everything, everything directly to my house batteries. And you just have to make sure you've got a suitably rated fuse for the um, the two power sources that you're providing. So again, one is for the uh, ACU 100 and one is for the CTOC wiring system.
once that CTOF wiring system is powered, I don't need to run separate power cables to this because the CTOF system is just one connection in the back that plugs in and it uh, powers this. And it also uh, powers uh, the EV sensor core just with this CTOF uh, cable system. And that's it. So I had to bring the boat out once uh, everything was installed and I had to do a complete circle to calibrate the compass and uh, to also figure out the, the deviation uh, like the magnetic deviation that was gonna uh, it was gonna experience based on my boat and it was only six degrees which was well within the uh, allowed um, range that you can I think you I think they say if it's over 40 degrees you have to reassess things but uh, six degrees was was nothing and then you can actually adjust that uh, through the setup so that's all uh, I have for you it's not uh, super exciting maybe but it's uh, exciting for me to test this out and the next time I go out I'll uh, show you how I engage the uh, auto helm and use it well before I end the video I just wanted to clarify something uh, I've received uh, some public comments and uh, some private messages sort of criticizing me for trying to sell photos and artwork which was a little disappointing to receive messages like that from people uh, calling me a sellout things like that or trying to cash in and uh, to be honest uh, the reason I even thought of uh, selling the photos and the artwork was because I had so many people asking uh, if I would sell them so um, anyways I just wanted to clarify that I'm not trying to cash in or I'm not trying to be a sellout or anything I'm just trying to uh, see if I could uh, create a little extra income uh, to help me um, get better equipment for making the videos for everyone that's all so anyways no one's being forced to buy anything and uh, I hope uh, if someone does enjoy the uh, videos and they do enjoy the uh, uh, artwork and photos that you know you might consider purchasing them but there's no uh, pressure at all to do that anyways I just wanted to clarify that because I those kind of messages kind of get under your skin sometimes so uh, the other thing is I'd like to say a great big thank you to a few more patrons uh, that's Donald Andrew and Stephen so thanks a lot for your support and I'm looking forward to some exciting cruising coming up the summer. I have uh, route planning already well underway, so hopefully you guys will want to stick around and uh, watch those videos. We'll see you on the next one.